bunch of people attending this meeting uh, live at a barbershop because uh, connectivity is an issue for them. And I just love this way of being able to include more people at our meeting. Uh, just to give folks a roadmap of the evening, uh, we've, I'm going to give some introductory remarks and updates. We're going to have some brief programming updates from um, community uh, organizations, parks and arts organizations talking about what they're doing. Uh, we're going to have a very, very short uh, report from Maria Phoebus, um, the Deputy Northern Manhattan uh, Parks Administrator, just going to give us an update on a couple of capital projects and some programs happening in our parks. Uh, and then we're going to have a presentation by the Parks Department on uh, the 186th Street basketball project, which we heard last month, but we had a couple of questions about. So they're coming back to give us a presentation. We'll have some Q&A around that to get um, uh, feedback from folks who are attending. Uh, we'll generate a resolution uh, based on that feedback uh, using the, the draft that we had generated at our meeting last month based on the presentation that uh, Parks will be giving uh, a second time this evening. So if there are any changes, um, we will obviously make them and vote on that again. And then we'll be having a presentation uh, by Trees New York on a tree planting initiative, and that is a rezo item as well. And by that time, I think we will all be tired and we will want to end this meeting and go home. Well, to the extent that we are already not home. Um, and my goal is to finish up as close to 8.30 as possible. Um, so I will ask people to be brief in their comments and focused in their comments. So in terms of updates and announcements. Liz, I think we may have quorum. Do you want to double yes. check them? Yes, we have quorum because uh, in the house I saw Luana and I see that Naima is here. So Hi. Six people. Hi, Luana. Hi. Okay. All right. So, so we have quorum and... Um, we are good to go. So I'm gonna, as I said, I'm gonna ask everybody to mute themselves, please, if you're not talking. Um, and uh, Naima, are, were you raising your hand about that or is there something else? Oh no, I was to confirm quorum, I'll lower ah, my hand. Okay, thank you so much, I appreciate that. Um, so, you know, the worst and saddest announcement that I have is that our beloved Sally Fisher died last month and can't even talk about that without crying. She was a fierce advocate for parks, mental health, food, hunger, the environment, traffic and transportation. There wasn't really anything that she didn't know something about and work on. Um, there will be a memorial service for her uh, in January at a date to be determined. The family is still working on that. Um, and I would respectfully request a moment of silence in her memory. Thank you. That was harder than I expected. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, at our meeting last month, we had two resolutions, um, one of which um, passed uh, unanimously and the other of which we uh, tabled uh, pending additional public feedback. That's gonna be this uh, this resolution on the 186th Street basketball court. The other resolution was on the um, the proposed scope of the renovation and redevelopment of the the waterfront 
at the Dykeman terminus and you know making some uh, additions to the dock, moving the dock. I encourage you to go onto our website and take a look at the minutes from the meeting and that resolution. It's a really interesting plan and the Parks Department will be coming back uh, probably in the late spring um, to present the specific uh, design um, as they proceed with that project. I had said that I was going to be giving a recap of the capital and expense budget priorities. I apologize. I did not prepare that information. I can tell you that parks and uh, Parks projects were not ranked as highly as they have been in the past. I think that's sort of reflective of uh, this community's priorities with respect to housing, transit, infrastructure repair. There are just so, so, so many needs that unfortunately parks were not ranked as highly, but I'm really hoping that our council members continue to uh, fund the many, many parks projects, uh, including the one that we're discussing this evening. Um, because they're just so important to the community. Um, I attended on Friday a planning call for uh, activities around the 175th anniversary of the building of the high bridge. So if there are people who have uh, thoughts and ideas on uh, what they'd like to see to commemorate the 175th anniversary of this tremendous uh, landmark in our community uh, in terms of programs and uh, working with our partners uh, in, in the Bronx on the, the Bronx side of the high bridge. Uh, reach out to me after the meeting. Uh, let me know and I can connect you with that planning group. Uh, don't have other updates on some of these uh, projects that we've been tracking, uh, but I did want to say that this morning uh, we received the excellent news that the Tony Awards, which are generally um, the ceremony, the televised ceremony for the Tony Awards, which is generally done downtown on Broadway in 2023 is going to be uptown at the United Palace. What? What? Broadway coming uptown. That is- I mean, I'm excited. I saw that email and I almost fell out of my chair. I was like, how do I get in that building? Right? I mean, that is just so huge. exciting. It's huge. We know Uptown is fantastic. And now, not only just the world of Broadway, but like the whole world. This is the Tonys. Millions of people worldwide watch this. And they're going to be, you know, watching Uptown, like Washington Heights represent. I am so stoked about this. So... Anyway, that's all I got for uh, for updates and announcements. And without further ado, I would like to call on some of our community partners who may have um, announcements to give. Uh, I will recognize you in the order in which I see your hands raised. Uh, Rosa. Oh, actually, no, we got Julie McCoy with her hand up first. Hello, everyone. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. Yep. OK, that's a quick sound check. So I'm Julie McCoy. I'm uh, now the Commodore of the Inwood Canoe Club, uh, New York's oldest continually operating paddle sport club in, well, in New York City since 1902 or so. Um, so I've got a few things just to rattle off for you all. So it is cold now. We are definitely in winter. And while it's not as busy at the boathouse as usual, um, we do have our cold weather paddlers out and our vice commodore and his team are just working on repairs and maintenance that we do in the off season. The Hudson River is too cold for us to have on water programs, but we have both a membership committee and an activities committee developing our programming for next year. Um, you might recall in previous meetings here, we announced that we had done a lot of extra stuff and we wanted to just keep building on that, have some more access uh, for people, have some things that don't necessarily involve going on the water, but allow people to appreciate the waterfront. Um, if you or your organization would like to get in touch with us, drop us a note at inwoodcanoe at gmail.com. Um, we also have a website, inwoodcanoenyc.org. Uh, two more things. I want to mention that our nonprofit affiliate called Uptown Paddling 
is looking for community partners to have uh, sessions with youth paddling. Um, basically, we have boats. Uh, we're looking for youth partners to work with. And we want to say how grateful we are to the Office of Council Member Carmen De La Rosa for providing a discretionary grant to fund Uptown Paddling's community outreach. We would love to see more young people from the community on the water. Uh, lastly, New York Open Water, which is a nonprofit that facilitates open water marathon, marathon swimming in the New York City region, um, uh, has wrapped up their season. They finished up in October. Uh, members of the club who have provided kayak support for swimmers, circumnavigating Manhattan, that is swimming around the island of Manhattan, have paddled a total of 1,650 miles over 57 days this past season. So, turtle strong. That's my report. Um, thank you. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, do we have other uh, community-based organizations that want to give a report? Yeah, I just like to report a little bit on the Ring Garden. Okay, very briefly. Yeah, I just wanted to say that our uh, holiday tree lighting was a wonderful success. We had probably estimated, oops, um, what happened? It's okay, we can hear you. Okay, we had uh, probably about 200 people that came and wonderful number of young children. Wow. Mr. Yeah, Mr. and Mrs. Claus were greeted enthusiastically. Uh, the Girl Scouts of Good Shepherd Church um, not only strung the lights on the bushes, they were wonderful hostesses. Um, uh, the Literacy New York uh, handed out books to the children. Uh, we had wonderful cookies from uh, uh, individually decorated large cookies to give to the children by Mr. and Mrs. Claus. And overall, um, just a wonderful, um, you know, wonderful um uh, time was had by everyone and the tree was lit and carols were sung. So it was, um, you know, a wonderful time. Nothing yeah. more really to, uh, to say. Also, the Literacy New York Storybook Group is marshalling on and they're meeting on, I believe it's Thursday mornings. The uh, kids want their stories regardless of the weather. So Bring your young children on, um, I believe it's Thursday mornings at 10 o'clock and enjoy the stories and the winter weather. And so to be continued. I'm sorry, you said that's uh, Thursday at 10? Yeah, I think so. Uh, check with Cassandra Colazzo, I believe. You know, it depends on the weather, you know, and how um, uh, cold it is. Okay. But um, one of the problems is the schools won't let groups in because of this COVID stuff, but we're outside and, you know, fresh air. And so we're an open site and families can, you know, have fun and have and have events. And that's what we're able to do. We also are now partnered with the Met Cloisters and they will be doing a to be continued to be discussed um, workshops in the Ring Garden, but that's in the early planning stages. So that's about pretty much what I have to say. Okay, sounds good. Uh, next up, we've got um, Rosa Yolanda Pineda from Conectémonos. Rosa, where are you? I'm muting myself. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, let me lower that data. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, Liz. It's, it's good to be here and see all my people for 186. Uh, Conectémonos reporting here, food and environmental justice, thanks to parks and its program is my park. We were able to plant bulbs along the pits, the street pits on Amsterdam Avenue, particularly around the uh, the Juan Bosch Plaza area, and also 186 and other places in the community. Um, with the support of Children's Arts and Science Workshop, last week, we just started the Work and Learn, work, learn and Grow program, which is a 16 weeks on food justice, and we are very thankful to Grito. Come out and support Grito Mexican restaurant on St. Nicholas Avenue between 186 and 187. They are training our young people 
to work in the uh, restaurant industry. So at the end of the program in March, and we will have a community event, they will have a food protection certificate uh, that, that is sponsored by the Department of Hygiene and Mental Health. Um, so that is all I have to say. The week of March, so we will have a community event that, that we would like to invite you. I am also very thankful to the BIT, Washington Heights um, BIT and Isidro Medina. Uh, I, I have this dream that we will have Christmas lights on all of uh, St. Nicholas Avenue. And yeah, last Friday when I was coming out of church, they were putting the lights up on St. Nicholas Avenue. And I hope that we have an opportunity to celebrate that. I think that face working. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, can you do me a favor and just send me a very brief recap of uh, what you said? I'm both running the meeting and taking notes on the meeting. So it's helpful for people who are giving reports to just send me a quick, like three sentence, not a long treatise, three sentences. We'll do so, please. I know, I know it's Thank very you. challenging. But. I appreciate it. <laughs> if you could do that, that would be great. Um, next up, we've, I think we just only have like two more people. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Naima. Are you reporting for? Uh... For Project Beauty. Okay. All right, good evening, everyone. So uh, there's an organization called the Project Beauty Experience and we are hosting a vision board workshop party. It's community friendly, it's family friendly. So it's for adults, it's for teens, it's for children. And pretty much it's an opportunity for the community to come together and get clarity on what are their goals for 2023 and then create their own vision boards. So uh, the information is Tuesday, December 20th, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Armory PAL, which is on the corner of 169th Street. Liz, I'll send you the flyer. Cool, thank you. Unfortunately, okay. that conflicts with our community board meeting, so I can't attend, but that sounds like a frankly I know. more interesting event. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, um, but thank you very much, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right, uh, next up we've got uh, board colleague Domingo Estevez, you uh, reporting on Uplift. Yeah, so it's that time of the year. Uh, we have, we're giving out this weekend uh, 1300 pelnils for, for the holidays. Let's um, go. Yeah, you already know, man. So check out, That's check incredible. out, uh, check out uh, the, if y'all got Instagram, check out Instagram, check out the links, help support. We're almost at our goal too uh, for fundraising. So if folks want to donate, uh, feel free to do so. If folks want to volunteer, just hit me up. Um, and I actually want to shout out now that I see Kiana in here. Uh, Kiana's doing something extremely magical with the Dykeman tree lighting. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a very successful event. Over four or 500 kids in the tree lighting uh, received top-notch toys uh, and pictures with Santa. Uh, good, good coffee. Uh, so I think something to highlight as well is the individuals in the community who are putting in that work. So thank you. That's great. Good luck. Thank you. Um, and I think last but not least, um, we've got a quick update from uh, Martin Collins at NOMA, who is announcing a basketball game and is not able to be here this evening. He asked me to announce that the Graham Uptown calendar launch party is tomorrow from 6 to 8 p.m. at the NOMA gallery. Um, and that Up Theater Company is producing uh, like a radio play live uh, at seven o'clock on Thursday at the United Palace lobby. So both of those things are at the United Palace 4140 Broadway. Uh, everyone is invited, both events are free. And if you have questions about what NOMA is doing, you can visit their website, NOMA, that's N-O-M-A-A-N-Y-C.org for more information um, and uptheater.org for more information about that radio play um, on Thursday. Uh, I'm not seeing any other hands. So that concludes this portion of the meeting. 
Uh, and I turn the mic over to Maria Phoebus to uh, give us a quick update on some of the uh, parks capital projects that um, have development since we last met. Thanks, Liz. Good evening, everyone. Happy holidays to you all. It's nice to be with you today. Jennifer couldn't be with us this evening. Um, I'm going to try to be as brief as I can. I'll give you an update on special events um, and other things happening in our parks. So I just want to say thanks, Liz, for recognizing and giving a moment of silence for Sally Fisher. Um, she will be missed and her impact uh, will be lasting in Northern Manhattan parks. Thank you very much for that. Um, okay, so uh, with special events, uh, we have a birding uh, bald eagle watch on Saturday, December 17th at Inwood Hill Park. Uh, we have the High Bridge Water Tower um, public uh, access tour on Saturday, December 17th from 1 to 3. We have a winter interest heather garden tour with Rhonda Brands on Sunday, December 18th from 1 to 2.30. We have a candlelight walk in Fort Tryon Park on Tuesday, December 20th. We have the menorah lighting at uh, Bennett Park on Wednesday, December 21st at 6 p.m. We have an Inwood Hill Park nature exploration on Sunday, December 25th from 1 to 2. Um, there's a lot of uh, kids event happening during the holidays as well. We have a uh, Manhattan Rocks Geology Hike at Inwood Hill Park on Tuesday, December 27th from 1 to 2. Um, another kids event, UPR, the Rangers are hosting a nature puppet show at J. Hood Wright on Thursday, December 29th from 1 to 2. Um, we also have a uh, winter mushroom uh, Zoom with mycologist Paul Sadowski on Saturday, January 7th. Um, I want to also uh, remind people that during the holiday we'll be at well beginning December 26 we'll be collecting Christmas trees um, for our uh, annual mulch fest beginning on December 26 um, through January 8th the Inwood Hill Park uh, is a drop-off site it's also a chipping site J Hood Wright Park is a drop-off site and I'll try to put this information uh, in the in the notes for you, Liz, it's a cool. lot of information. Um, I also want to uh, inform everyone that um, Mayor Adams and uh, Commissioner Sue Donahue have announced that um, we have expanded recreation hours at, at uh, some of our recreation centers. Um, High Bridge Recreation Center uh, will be benefiting from that specifically. Um, it's part of a Saturday Night Lights program um, offered by NYPD to uh, provide um, underserved neighborhoods with um, activities uh, during evening hours. So, those uh, hours? yes, so Monday through Friday at Highbridge, the hours will be from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Saturday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., Sunday from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. So we hope that people will come out um, and enjoy the amenities of Highbridge Play Center. Um, another announcement that we have is that um, NYC Parks has updated their NYC Tree Map uh, app, and uh, uh, we've updated it, um, including um, a new survey with uh, updated uh, tree information. They've added over 300 additional trees into the, into the app. Um, you can go onto the, the uh, app and identify um, information um, for trees. Uh, there's different, uh, in different neighborhoods, you can, it's like an app that you use to track uh, how the tree is growing, um, what's going on with the tree, what type of trees. So this is like a tree identifier. Um, and that's how New York City tracks their trees. Uh, it's at NYC Tree Map um, for that information. And uh, I'll give you the capital update project uh, projects now. Um, sorry. Okay. Um, the Inwood Hill Park Nature um, Center construction continues. It's currently at 50% completed. The Monsignor Kett uh, basketball and playground renovation is moving along also. It's at 65% completed. Um, the comfort station has been demolished. They've, uh, they're continuing to pave at the, at the current time, weather permitting. 
Um, the Bennett Avenue rock face construction is winding down. The south end of Bennett uh, Avenue will be opened uh, by Monday. The north end continues to stay closed. Um, the Fort Washington Park 181st Street Greenway construction continues. Um, that is at 70% completed um, and they will be doing additional paving weather permitting. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Um, a quick question or two rather, if you can, you know, again, send me like a quick report because um, my notes are sketchy. Um, and if you can give a sense of um, when you say that things are 50% completed, 65% completed, whatever, can you give a sense of anticipated completion dates for mm -hmm. the Nature Center, Monsignor Cat, the Rock, the Bennett Rock Face, and the Greenway? Okay, would you like me to tell you that now or do you want yes. me to put it in the notes? No, if you could tell us that now. Okay, so um, the expected completion date for Monsignor Kett is uh, June 2023. Um, the Greenway, uh, the expected completion date is January 2023. Uh, um, the Bennett Avenue rock face is 70% completed. Um, so that's also um, by the end of this month. Um, the Nature Center is... Uh, 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 July of 2023. Um, is there something else that I missed? No. And, and on the Bennett Avenue rock face, um, the parking, because, uh, you know, there was a lot of parking taken away. So can you just walk me through what's the status of the return of the parking? Yeah. So the south end of the, uh, the Bennett Avenue, um, those parking spaces will be restored, um, but that's only a small portion of the entire uh, road bed. So I would say maybe below 190th Street. Yes, that's towards the uh, Broadway end of the park. So that would I would say maybe about 10 spaces at most, but I can get a, a firmer confirmation for you tomorrow. Okay. That would be helpful. Thank you. Okay. Um, I appreciate that and I appreciate your brevity. Um, so in the interest of time, usually I just wanna let folks know, usually it's at this point that we have a little bit of a Q and A for the parks department. People have burning questions about parks and we try really hard to make our parks representatives uh, available to people for that Q&A, but I know that we really want to get to the next agenda item, so I'm not going to do that here. Um, I do have somebody, Adama, I don't want to mispronounce your last name, who wanted to do a mic check. Uh, are you hearing us okay? Hello? I don't think the mic check's working. I see that she's off or he's off mute. Um, okay. Yeah. Hold on. So was there something that you wanted to say? Were you looking to present? Uh, can you turn your video on? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what's up with your mic, but... Um, I'm just going to type a message. Okay. Um, unfortunately. So, uh, Adama, if you can figure out what's going on, if you can get your camera to work and like wave at us or type something else in the chat, that would be helpful. And we can uh, recognize you at that point. Um, Yesenia Rodriguez asked, where are all these events being promoted so that more people in the community know what's happening in our community? Well, there are a couple of places. One of the places where they're being promoted is right here. And one of the reasons why we encourage people to attend committee meetings is that's where you find out about a lot of these things. So particularly in the case of parks and cultural affairs, where there are so many events in our parks and there are so many different cultural events um, and different organizations that are doing stuff and reporting on the stuff that they're doing, coming to this meeting 
great way to learn about that stuff. You can also um, get on the email of Community Board 12 Manhattan. Um, if you go to the CB12M website, which is, hold on a second, I'm just getting it. Uh, it's cb12manhattan.cityofnewyork.us slash cb12. So if you go to the website, you can sign up for uh, the community board mailing list. The good news is you will get a lot of emails about all kinds of community events. The bad news is you will get a lot of emails. So, you know, keep in mind, you'll get a lot of emails. You'll be very well informed, but lots of stuff. And then Maria just answered in the chat that um, if you would like to get on the, um, the mailing list, to hear more specifically about stuff going on in parks through the Urban Park Rangers, through the Fort Tryon Park Trust, Highbridge, Inwood Hill, all of that, um, you can go to the Parks Department, uh, www.nyc.gov parks, or you can go to forttryonparktrust.org and you can sign up for, um, periodic updates on parks events. If you go to the Fort Tryon Park Trust.org website to sign up for that email list, you will not just be getting information about Fort Tryon Park. Fort Tryon Park Trust runs programming throughout many of our parks, including Highbridge, Inwood Hill, Isham Park, Bennett Park, um, J. Hood Wright Park. So if you live uptown and you care about um, events and parks, you want to get on that list for more information. Um, I think that's it. Thank you very much, Jesenia, for asking that question. And without further ado, we can move to the event, that, the agenda item that I think most of the folks are here for, uh, and that is the 186th Street basketball um, renovation. Now, before uh, I give the parks, um, uh, before I give the parks report, I, I'm sorry, uh, before I, I uh, give the mic over to parks to give their, um, their presentation, I just want to give a little bit of uh, background. So we had uh, the public scoping meeting hosted by uh, the Parks Department and Councilwoman De La Rosa. And many of you were in attendance there. We had a really lively, robust conversation about what it is that folks are looking for uh, in that space. Uh, and what we heard was, you know, to really make it available, not only to have a safe space, um, for basketball, but to open that space up so that the community could kind of do more things, that people could have some, some sitting space and maybe be able to have events there like a farmer's market or crafts fairs or uh, other ways of the community coming together and using that space. Um, also very, very important is the preservation and restoration of the uh, murals that are there. Now, an important word about the murals, the murals themselves, although they are beloved and we want to see them restored, they're not on parks property. So they can't be part of this project that the parks department is presenting. Parks can help facilitate it. They can work with the landlord to say, you know, this is important to the community. Because they're a city agency, they can kind of open up that, um, that conversation, but they don't have the budget or the ability to actually make any kind of repairs or renovations um, to the uh, murals. That's something that, that we as a community have to do. Um, although Parks is obviously happy to do whatever they can to um, facilitate that or to make, and also to make sure that when the contractors are doing work that they don't damage the, uh, the murals. 
So um, Parks is going to give us an, uh, a recap of the presentation that they gave last month. And when we're done with that, I'm going to share uh, my screen to show the resolution that we had come, back, come up with last month. Um, and then we'll take some feedback, starting with all the folks in the barbershop. All right. Who's doing this, Ricardo or Laura? It's Laura. OK. Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Laura Drawbaugh. I'm the landscape architect for the West 186th Street Basketball Court. Very happy to see you again. Some of you um, saw the November 10th presentation of the schematic design. But if you weren't there, I'm going to go quickly over it. And uh, we have made a few improvements to the schematic design after hearing uh, some of the comments on in November. <clears throat> uh, so our goal, sorry. Sorry, this is the <laughs> councilwoman. May oh, I great. Parks presents Liz Ritter. Absolutely, thank you. I didn't realize you were here. I apologize for not recognizing you sooner. Yes. No problem. Sorry, I just didn't want us to get into the presentation and then interrupt uh, the public's ability to ask questions. I just wanted to thank Community Board 12, Liz Ritter and the entire board really for uh, helping to facilitate this conversation and Department of Parks who has, uh, you know, I think made an extraordinary effort to make sure that our community is involved in this conversation for the community on 186th Street and the surrounding neighbors. This is, project is a long time coming uh, this project was funded by the last council uh, at the tune of $1.1 million. And we already had a meeting where we were able to get feedback from the community, preliminary feedback on what they'd like to see here. Um, I just want to say very clearly that tonight we want to continue to hear that feedback from the community. Um, it is our collective goal to make sure that what happens at 186th Street is a reflection of community needs and community wants. And I look forward to seeing this project come to fruition. I also want to give thanks to my staff, in particular Kiana Diaz, who uh, grew up on this block um, for making sure that we are uh, hearing from the voices of those people who are traditionally left out of the conversation. I want to also thank the folks at the barbershop for helping us to set up a location for the second time to make sure that the voices of our community could be heard. And so it's an honor to be able to represent this community and to be able to see these types of projects come to fruition. So I just want to thank Department of Parks once again and Community Board 12 for the opportunity. So thank you. Uh, great. <laughs> so um, our goals are... Uh, uh, to provide a community refuge for everyone with an emphasis on basketball and upgrade the physical site. Um, we'd like to provide sustainable planting, stormwater management, and upgrade the walls, paving, fencing, lighting, drainage, and water supply. Uh, your park, as you know, is located north of 100 Washington Bridge on West 186th Street between Audubon and St. Nicholas Avenues. The basketball court was created after a building here burned down in the 1970s. Uh, the Association of Progressive Dominicans received permission from the city to establish a court here. And in 1997, the city installed fencing, lighting, and hoops. Uh, we're well out of any flood zone. And the neighborhood land use is dense multifamily walk-up buildings, mostly built in the 1920s. So. <clears throat> This neighborhood map shows how precious this site is. It's the only park within a five minute walk of this neighborhood. The nearest park with any sports amenities is Raoul Wallenberg Park in Highbridge. Uh, but you are getting two new parks. Dykeman Rest Playground is in procurement and Monsignor Cat, which is in construction, is a total redo. Um, so currently uh, it's a little more than an empty lot with asphalt. The murals, uh, and names on the wall celebrate neighborhood residents. Existing conditions are simple, asphalt with non-regulation <clears throat> basketball markings, four sports lights, four basketball backstops, chain link fences, some on retaining walls, a drinking fountain and lighting that doesn't work, and no green space. Uh, the site's in very poor condition and with settling due to unstable 
foundation materials, broken amenities, and has no drainage structures. Um, interestingly, the site, which is at a very high elevation, has very strong shadows cast by the buildings on three sides, making the space act as a sundial. The rear lot's a parking lot. Uh, because of the movement of light across the site, it's clear to see that the best shade cast by buildings in a, the hot summer afternoons is in the northwest corner of the site. Uh, <clears throat> this is the east retaining wall, which is in poor condition. And we're going to rebuild this with funds from the, city, the city's retaining wall funding. Uh, it retains about five feet fill below grade. And this is a view of the reverse side of that wall. And we're also going to rebuild the retaining wall on the other side too on the west. Uh, the court does not drain and there's settling throughout. Uh, it's a very strong identification to Dominican culture and very strong sense of neighborhood ownership. The murals are beloved and the community is exploring restoring them. This one is a tribute to Rudy Frias and you can see the old uh, electric cabinet and the old uh, water backflow prevention box can be seen too. Okay, so looking to, from the inside, looking to the front, you can see some of the settling and the distinct shadows here. And then looking from the front to the rear, you can also see these very strong shadows. I'm not the first person to notice the uh, movement of light across um, this, this site. On the rear west wall, the muralist also noticed the passage of sun and time, and he painted and he commemorates this person's life from sunrise to sunset. And he painted the word sunrise so that it's always illuminated by sun in the morning. Uh, here's a shade study as if you were up above, flying above the site and it reveals a year's solstice and equinox shadows on the longest and shortest days of the year. Uh, we had a lively and well-attended community input meeting with some neighbors commented, commenting from the barbershop and it uh, looks like I'm happy to see you again. Uh, it's clear that this site, however shabby, is your neighborhood's beloved backyard to grow up in and there's a strong desire for it to still provide an F upgraded refuge for all. It's a place for kids and teens to play and it serves as a community backyard. Other priorities are sustainable features, shade, <clears throat> seating for all ages, preservation of the murals, and a site that could provide for multi-purpose activities such as a farmer's market, kids activities, and performances. Uh, quick overlay of the shadows you just saw, and you'll see that this will inspire a unique basketball court. So this is uh, the proposed design that we showed in November. You're looking at it as if you're a bird looking down and one, <clears throat> West 186 is on the west side, on the right side. So we have a basketball court, a planted area and seating shaded by five new trees. We have bucket hoops uh, for kids, ladybug and bee hopscotch for kids in the seating area. And also included is a drinking fountain and bottle filler. Uh, there's park security lighting with new electric service in the seating area. Uh, both retaining walls again are going to be rebuilt with new 12 foot high chain link fence on them. We're going to put a detention system under the basketball court and the site will have new catch basins to catch uh, stormwater runoff. And uh, of course, we're going to remove the unstable foundation material and repave the site so it's nice and flat. Uh, as Liz said, the murals aren't our property, so we can't restore them, but we can ask our contractor to protect them. The best fitting regulation size basketball court for this slight is a slightly narrow junior court. So this is the fence diagram that we showed uh, in November, and it included two uh, 10 foot wide, four foot high gates one from the sidewalk and one going into the basketball court. And we also, um, the fence on the street was shown at uh, four foot high, which is park standard height. And there we had a 12 foot high 
chain link fence behind the backstop. Uh, however, we got some comments in November that um, people seated in this seating area might not be fully protected from flying basketballs. And then we also decided it might not be so great to have seating between two rows of fences. <clears throat> so uh, we eliminated that four, four foot fence uh, by the basketball and we completely enclosed the basketball court with a 10 foot high chain link fence and an eight foot high lockable gate into the basketball. And so this will protect the seating area. We're going to use, uh, let's see. Oh, so this is the plan again with the uh, fence change. And also this did allow us to put a few more benches uh, into the basketball court. Uh, we're going to use standard parks materials, uh, new basketball backstops, benches, lighting in the seating area, bucket hoops for kids, and fun game markings. Uh, Plant material will pay attention to the sight lines and make sure that there's good visibility by installing trees and low evergreen shrubs and perennials. And the trees will provide cooling shade and fall color. Uh, it's a quick before and after diagram showing the increase in planting area for water to drain and plants to grow. Uh, so to get a better idea of what the park uh, will look like is uh, this first rendering, which shows you as if you were in the basketball court looking toward 186, then you can see the 10 foot high uh, chain link fence enclosing the basketball and separating it from the seating area. And this is a view uh, as if you were in the seating area looking toward the basketball. And we would have this uh, eight foot high, 10 foot wide uh, gate into the basketball court. Uh, here's a view of the proposed seating area, and you can see the gate open here to the basketball court. And then a view uh, as if you're walking on the sidewalk, looking, uh, uh, looking into the seating area and basketball area, and you get a little idea of what those uh, hoops, play hoops are for kids. Okay, so one last look at the plan. Uh, for your comments and questions. Thank you. Laura, may I add uh, one, a couple more things really quickly? Um, the, the retaining walls that we are going to be replacing uh, on the east and west sides, they now stick up above grade a few feet. Um, we are going to replace them so that they are flush, so there will be no standing uh, new retaining walls in those locations. So it'll be much cleaner look, uh, and um, that's where the fences will go the new 12 foot fence. So everything will be um, flush with grain. In addition, uh, Laura said that the fence will prevent the balls from going into this, the seating area. It will also make it much harder for, for people to break into the um, basketball court area late at night for late night play. That was something else that was mentioned at the meeting, uh, the last meeting. Okay, um, thank you. I appreciate the thought that you put into considering some of the feedback that we had about the fence at the last meeting. Uh, for those who were not at the last meeting and not able to um, review the minutes, uh, one of the things uh, that we spent a long time talking about was the height of the fence. And not only the concern about you know, basketballs flying and hitting people. So I really appreciate the, the 10 foot fence around uh, that I think will protect the seating area. But there was a, a lot of conversation about the height of the fence at the sidewalk. Uh, currently it's showing as four feet high and there was, uh, and the current fence is like eight feet high. Um, the current fence, I think everybody agrees has a really carceral appearance. It looks kind of like a prison. It's not inviting. The four foot fence is much more inviting and is really from a design perspective is lovely. Um, but there is the question of is four feet high enough to um, 
you know, keep there from being a lot of activity late at night, which could potentially be disturbing. Um, and this 10 foot fence may wind up accomplishing that, uh, but left open as a question is, would it possibly make sense to have a seven foot fence at the sidewalk rather than a four foot fence? So keep that question in mind as you are providing your feedback. So I would like to um, do a lap through the public before we go uh, and recognize members of the committee because people on the committee pretty much had the opportunity to share their thoughts on this design. So I'd like to open up the mic. Uh, Kiana, if you wanna unmute yourself over at the barbershop. And can you also tell me the name of the barbershop and the address so I can have that information in the, uh, in the minutes? Yeah. Okay, great. All right, so uh, we're live in the barbershop. Audubon Playground. Oh, sorry, Audubon Barbershop. Uh, uh, okay, okay, so. Okay. so so it's a little bit uh the, the there's a there's a it's a pretty live room there and i would love to get some input from the folks there but in order for everybody on zoom to be able to hear you we're going to need everybody in the room to not be talking so that we can hear people talking in the barbershop one at a time okay Okay. Okay. I, I can't see my anyway. Hi, my name is Grisel. I'm a resident in the community, and my son uses a lot, utilizes the space. All right. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, she can hear you. She can hear me. Okay. Um, the design, even though it looks great, I don't feel it meets the needs of the community. Uh, it has too much seating, which perpetuates unwanted people hanging out, as opposed to what the space is supposed to be, which is the basketball court. Um, I feel that perhaps the basketball court should be expanded. And if there are going to be other spaces, definitely be activity based and less seating. Um, we want less hanging out and maybe more working out, <laughs> you know? Um, so I would definitely, just something to consider. Uh, can you tell me again your name? Hi, my name is Grizel Polanco. I just want to spell it correctly for the minutes. It's G-U-R-C-E-L? G-R-I-S-E-L. And then Polanco, P as in Peter, O L A N C O. Got it. The Polanco part I got. Grisel, thank you so much. Um, okay, next up. Okay. Got a headless man and a puffy jacket. Yeah, so now my head came back. <laughs> okay, your head came back. Uh, cool. Uh, my name is Gabriel Lopez. I'm also a resident of this community for quite a while. I mean, born and raised in this community. And uh, exactly what my other, Rizal, exactly what she was saying. I believe that it, um, too much seating in the, in the playground. More activities, they should take away the seatings and add more activities for the kids. Like that, it'll be more recreation for the kids and less seating because the area Although it's uh, kind of being gentrified and all of that right now, we probably uh, there'll be wrong, the wrong people sitting there. And uh, better, more seat, less seating, more play for the kids. That's my piece, Gabriel Lopez. I'm out. You good? Yeah. Um, just back? tell me your, your first name is Gabriel? Correct. Okay. Thank you so much, Gabriel. I appreciate that. Uh, do we have more folks at the at the barbershop who want to weigh in on this? Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
Hi, my name is Valerie Baez. I'm also a resident of the community. I have a three and a half year old son. Um, it's been very challenging taking him to the basketball court, even on weekends when you think you don't have you know anybody around. There's always somebody there, and kids cannot be there unsupervised. You don't feel safe. So I just can imagine having a, like such an area for people to sit and um we're having you know um my crimes now we have a, a drug addict so i would not want to see the park flutter with unwanted you know activities other than kids having fun and having rec recreational time so we can take them away from all these electronics and have them you know have the community a part of their lifespan Okay, thank you. And tell me your last name again, Valerie. It's Bias. B -A -E -Z. Bias. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Next up at the barber shop. Anybody else? Matita, diga que diga algo aquí, por favor. Dígale que algo que usted cree de de cómo se ve, de presupuesto, del presupuesto. Okay, that's fine. What's her name? We really, we really need. We really need for the folks at the barbershop to just only be talking one at a time. So we got Josefina. She's embarrassed. She doesn't want to speak. But she's Spanish. Doña, necesitamos oír lo que tú necesitas decir. I will gladly. Hello, this is Luana Ferreira. I will gladly translate. Yo voy a traducir para mi gente lo que ustedes necesitan. Dígalo en español. Que aquí hay personas que hablan en español. Gracias, sí. pero tenemos okay. alguien en la reunión, en el barbershop, que puede traducir. Muy bien, perfecto. I'm, as a community board, I want to offer translation. As a community I appreciate board, that. I appreciate that. Mi opinión es que los bancos ocupan mucho espacio. Es mejor sin los bancos. Her personal opinion is that the benches take up a lot of space. Para que los niños puedan jugar y... And it's going to take up from the recreational area that the kids are going to be playing in. She wants a couple of more, uh, a couple of more exercise activities, um, sort of like the bar that you see on the other park, where you know the kids can do their exercise and actually, actually play around in adults too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and your name is Josefina? Josefina Taveras. Taveras, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't know you spoke Spanish. Yeah, yeah. I do my best. Okay. Uh, do we have uh, do we have other folks at the barbershop who want to weigh in on this? Give me one second. Give me one. Let me just move this real quick. So while so while y'all are doing that, uh, I'm gonna take a lap through the rest of the through the rest of say what? We have one more person. No, no, no. One more. Okay. How you doing, Manos Party? Good. Tell me your name. Party. As far as the design, I think it's perfect, but I'm not actually a basketball player, so I I'm, I'm trying to listen to them, you know. And they say that it takes you too much space. The seating or whatever, but I think it's actually it looks perfect to me. But you know they have their opinion. And I think this is a good consideration. But I think there is too much seating in a way. I think the first the first row of seat is good, but then the other. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you tell me again your name, sir? Freddie, like Freddie Krueger. Oh, Freddie. Okay. You got a last name, Freddie. <laughs> Tejada. Tejada. Okay, great. Got that. All right. Thank you. 
So I want to just, um, in the interest of transparency, we have a Q&A, but the only people who can read the Q&A are the panelists. So we have um, Shoshana Cuevas, who says, to minimize the carceral appearance of an eight foot fence, what design options are available or within budget? Thinking out loud, possibly something more ornate, tall enough to deter unwanted activity, but aesthetically pleasing. So I do just want to say that um, the Parks Department standard now is a four foot fence. And in some cases, if the community wants a higher fence, they can do a seven foot fence. They wouldn't do an eight foot fence. And there are some options to put like a picket uh, at the top. So that would, um, have a little bit more of an open appearance um, and not the ugliness of the fence that's there now, um, but would also deter people from, from uh, accessing the site. So it would be helpful to get a sense from folks in the community, both in the barbershop and who are uh, on the Zoom directly, if people can speak to, do you like the four foot fence? Would you prefer a seven foot fence? Um, so I also, uh, we've got Warner Uribe who says, who also says that um, to reduce the seating and focus more on the recreational aspects of the park. Um, and I would like to recognize uh, Rosa Yolanda Pineda, who had had her hand up before. Um, so if you want to speak to. Thank you. This design. You. Um, yeah. I, I, I appreciate the, the work that the Office of Council Women uh, de las Rosas is doing as continuation of the work of the of Councilman Rodriguez. Um, I would like, and I want to, to address the height of the fence. And before I do that, I, I, I need to recognize the participation of the people from the block and our history with that cancha, we call it a cancha, that it goes back to the 90s where when I was at the ACDP and we, the people from the block, prevented that, that space, it was a lot, from being privatized and requested from the park department to do the, the court, the basketball court. So I think it's important to that. It's also important to know the role of the community board and particularly this committee that is here present in, and the role of Connectemonos in securing the funds for this for this court. Um, I, I, in response to what Liz is saying, I connected us last month when this was presented and Omar, my son, who is also from the block and couldn't be here tonight, we are proposing the seven instead of the four uh, feet uh, friends with the picket, and we have explained this before, a four feed is not enough for protection of keeping the, the ball, the basketball court ball inside the premises, and nor does it deter the people that would like to use that space for other activities uh, after hours. So we are proposing the seven rather than the four and the seven with the picket to deter uh, for protection and for better use of the space. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Adema, and can you please pronounce your last name so I get it right?
Okay, we're still having, uh, you're still having mic issues. Can we take them back to the barbershop? Uh, I'll come back to the barbershop in a moment, but there are a bunch of people who have their hands raised. So I'm trying to like be okay. fair. So I will call on you. It's gonna give some other people a chance to speak. Uh, Adema, your mic doesn't seem to be working. So if you could just type your question in the chat, I will then ask it out loud. Um, Timothy Brown. Hi, Liz. How you doing? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, hello. Uh, my name is Timothy Brown. I'm a resident of Washington Heights. I the the four foot fence, uh, like Rosa just said. You know, I, I now that I see the schematics uh, on this meeting and where they're doing with the hoops. That is not going to keep balls in, and it is a safety risk. You know, this this visual we're looking at right now, the proposed south view from the sidewalk, you got the children's basketball hoops right there. You see how much higher those are from the fence? What's going to stop? A, I, I play basketball, so I know balls can go wherever balls want to go sometimes. That four-foot fence, I, I see it happening. A ball right over the fence, a child running out to get that ball and get hit by a car. You know, uh to address the community's concern, I'm in agreement with everybody at the barbershop that mentioned the seating. Uh, it's very unfortunate that they took a quarter of the basketball court to put in um, these plants in these seatings. This is the 186th Street basketball court, not the 186th Street NYC neighborhood park. Like this should have been a basketball court and kept for recreational. We should have had bathrooms put in installed instead of all this extra seating. Uh, I think that was with it's a beautiful rendition like I'm very hyped for that water fountain um, to be able to fill up water like that and the water the water bottle that's such a great amity but it is unfortunate that from my perspective that so much of the court was taken for a lot of unnecessary seating and the community does have very valid concerns because we see it all the time about the type of behavior you know that you might see there people sitting there posting up all day wanting a drink that's supposed to be a spot for kids you know once once the, you guys build this park we're going to be in the community utilizing it and having to deal with these problems when they arise not the parks department so it's unfortunate that oversight happened it would have been nice to take out some of that seating and maybe put a bathroom in for us because if you want to have a space with so much kit with with kids activities which we need and farmers markets and basketball tournaments and things like we need to be able to use the restroom mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there should be one there that okay. four foot, I am in favor of the seven foot fence. Uh, the four foot does not cut it. I, the okay. parks idea is such a beautiful idea. I, I, I support the idea of parks trying to make places feel more open and inviting, but in this case, it's just not functional. Okay. And Thank the seven you. foot fence is more appropriate. Thank you. And once again, I'm going to ask people to please keep their comments brief, focused, and say what they have to say without like repeating it. I do want to um, just address, uh, and I'm sorry for speaking a little bit out of turn, but I want to address something that, that uh, you raised, Timothy, and that somebody else raised in the Q&A, and that's about bathrooms. Uh, this committee and this board is all about bathrooms, and we take every opportunity to advocate for bathrooms, to demand funding from our elected officials for bathrooms. Uh, something that people don't realize about bathrooms is they are incredibly expensive because they require plumbing. So they typically have a fairly large footprint because once you build a bathroom, you can't just build, you know, you're not building a porta potty, you're building a comfort station that has um, two gendered facilities and that's ADA compliant. So you're talking about something that is very large, big footprint, super expensive because you have to plumb it. Uh, there is some plumbing in this site uh, because there is the water fountain and part of what makes this project expensive is bringing back the plumbing so that the water fountain works. But to do the additional plumbing um, to create a comfort station, in addition to taking a huge footprint for that comfort station, uh, it would be incredibly expensive. Um, half a million, three quarters of a million, more than a, half a million, $5 million. 
five million or five hundred thousand? Five million dollars. Five million dollars for a comfort station. Okay. So there's a one point one million dollar project. Uh, this would. It was a struggle to get that money. Um, adding a bathroom would stop this project while more money was found. And I think nobody really wants that. So while I agree 1 million percent with the need for bathrooms, that's gonna be a non-starter in this space. Um, so yeah. Uh, and there are, there's a bunch of uh, comments in the Q and A asking, uh, sort of echoing the seven foot fence um can i mention something liz because i remember last time that they yes. said that there's two fences there there's the 12 foot fence that's for the basketball court and then there's like the four foot fence there's actually three fences there's right? a 12 foot fence that is directly behind the backstop there is a 10 foot fence that runs on either side of the 12 foot fence that goes to the perimeter and which has uh, a gate um, that is eight feet. So I think that whatever is the seating area and based on the feedback that we're getting from the public, it sounds like that seating area, the design of that seating area may need to change to have less seating, more recreation, possibly some, um, some uh, exercise pieces such as we've seen put in various other parks, but that area will be fairly well protected from basketballs within the basketball court. Uh, somebody, I believe it was Timothy, yep. made a really valid point with respect to balls that might be coming out of the buckets and that the four foot fencing is gonna be inadequate for that. Right. But I'm just going to put out here, I, I don't want to, this is the community board committee and reflective of the community. This is not the Liz committee. So what I think doesn't really matter all that much, but based on what I'm hearing, no one has said, yeah, we want a four foot fence. Literally everybody is saying, <laughs> at, you know, on the Zoom, at the, at the barbershop and in the Q&A, that they want a seven foot fence. So if someone objects to that, please get up and like wave your hands or say something in the Q and A, but I I'm feeling like that's a solid piece of feedback from the committee, uh, from, from the community that, uh, that we'd like to see the design for the exterior include the seven foot fence with the picket. Um, and if there is the opportunity to make it you know, extra beautiful if there's some other like design standard um, that can be added to make it not only functional, but decorative, that that would be great. Understanding that that may be cost prohibitive. So I would like to, I'm gonna shut up now and uh, I'd like to go back to uh, Luana, Domingo and, I'm sorry, Luana, Nobles and Domingo and then back to the barbershop. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Liz. I want to shout out the barbershop because this is what real community organization looks like. So un saludo fuerte a mi gente. I, I just want the clarification that we're not advocating for the elimination of seats, but reducing the seats because I'm also advocating for our senior citizens that might, you know, want to sit down in a park as well as the parents who will take their children to play in this park and will need seating. So I just, I'm just do, looking for a point of clarification for language that we're not speaking about eliminating the seats, but coming up with some equation to reduce it, but still provide some seating. Yep, absolutely heard. I didn't hear anyone say no seating. I've, I'm hearing everybody saying there's too much seating. So absolutely with you on that. Um, nobles. Hey, folks. Uh, thank you so much. Again, yeah, shout out to the barbershop uh, for coming in. Dude, this is what community looks like. 
much love. Yo, so check it out. Seven foot with the picket. I'm 100% with that as well. Um, but my thing, though, is, you know, someone like Luana, point of clarification, I also haven't heard anyone say, maybe except for Timothy, about cutting down the green space. But I, I think there is still a need for green space. It's good for mental health, especially for the parents sitting down, especially for folks walking by, community folks. So maybe as like we think about how we can reduce the seating, still think about how we can keep some green space there for folks, um, because it is really good for mental health and urban environments. That's that's all I had. Thank you. Um, Domingo. Yeah, so my thing is like, uh, I hear good intentions, you know what I'm saying? I, I understand people wanting to visualize uh, what they feel is conducive to uh, the creation of a healthy society. Uh, but we also have to take into consideration what's the reality of the space, what's that space conducive for, and the type of people that actually frequent the space, right? Uh, because that's part of the equation that is often uh, assumption-based, right? Because we want our good intentions to overshadow the fact that there's already an active uh, community base, an active ecosystem already engaging in that space. And I say that to say this, what I think the community being part of both meetings wanted was for their basketball course to be fixed and for an alternate space where youth could engage outside of the everyday community ordeal that we're dealing with living in the inner city, right? So as it sounds great um, around seating, it sounds great around green spaces, I think that's not necessarily what's going to be conducive to creating an environment or revitalizing an environment that the community has so much wanted for years. So like Timothy said, right, if you engage in this court, the court is already small as it is. The, the court of reduction is not worth what's been added to it. That's one. The seating is great. But we're currently in a, in, a, in a climate as somebody who works locally in a school in, in, in our community where anything that involves seeding attracts unnecessary attention that's going to require us now to partner up with other organizations to start dealing with the crowd that's attracted based on that, to do cleanups, to deal with certain societal issues that we're dealing with now. So... My thing is, if we keep it simple and beautiful, what's already there, I think that's what most people want. They want a space that could welcome the youth, adequate basketball courts. And as far as seating is great, the kids that engage there, the parents, the, that ecosystem that engages, this, we'll, we'll figure it out. As far as the green, it's great. Uh, there could be some pla planners put at the, at the beginning of the entrance, and hopefully that, that meets... But what I my my recommendation is let's stick to the court, let's make it an adequate space, let's let's finally fix the 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 the, the water fountain that has never worked, right? And let's get some lights into that court. In essence, that's what people want. You know what I'm saying? Let's make it. Let's make sure that our youth have adequate spaces to engage in. In the future, if any more upgrades need to be made. I hope Carmen, she's there. She 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 does particip participatory budgeting every year. There could be upgrades, but let's focus on the essence without losing too much of You're what people wanted it for. Okay. That what? You're way over two minutes. I hear you, Liz, but you've been winning way over two minutes the whole night. Uh, I just want to say our funding does not allow for um, uh, to fix the lights in the basketball court. We have we we have lighting um, some security lights in the front of the park. This is why we have the council uh, member on. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Uh, Naima. Oh, thank you so much. So I, I've been listening to everyone, and and you know each person brings up great points. Um, sorry, I'm just processing the tension because there's a lot of passion in the room. Let me turn my, um, okay, the camera doesn't work, but that's fine. So look, this is what I wanted to share. Uh, for those who may not know, my name is Naima. I think that this park, it just, it can't be everything for everybody. 
And so I think that's the best way to put it out there. This park can't be everything to everybody because the space is actually small, right? And I would like to point out to the fact that we're having this discussion today about this particular space because of the grassroots advocacy of youth leaders from the community. Like this is something that's coming from the ground up. You know, the fact that, that, that folks are in that barbershop, the fact that people have shown up to, to have this discussion from the community, a lot of young people, is because they've been doing this for a long time. So I understand, you know, the need to incorporate green space and think about other folks that may want to use the space. However, in the conditions that this space has right now, there's a there's there's a, a, a particular segment of the population that has been using it. And so again, they've been fighting and advocating and and speaking up for a long time. And this is finally on the table. And so I just don't want us to lose sight of why this started. Again, this this park space can't be everything to everyone. And you know, Domingo, you know, I wish there wasn't that 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 little breakdown between the both of you, Liz and Domingo at the end, but you know, where he's coming from is let's just remember why this was started, right? Mm -hmm. And our youth do need these spaces and it's okay to sometimes center them in certain spaces. So I just wanna put that out there. I appreciate that. Uh, next up we have, uh, Ricardo, did you have a question or a clarification you wanted to make? Uh, I actually have a question and I wanted to point out a, sort of a conflict. Actually, what Naima said was very um, astute. Uh, the, at the uh, listening community input session, there were a lot of um, desires for this space, a lot of wishes, a lot of age groups. Um, it was, it was. We we heard over and over again that they didn't want it just to be basketball. The basketball is the central feature here, but that they want, but that people uh, who were speaking out wanted things for kids uh, of other ages because a large basketball court like this, it, it sort of tends towards older kids, teenagers and older and grownups. And that for the, for the younger kids, kids under 13, uh, preteens, uh, even children, that there might be, if, if even one or two older, like teenagers or grownups are playing basketball, there's gonna be a feeling that they shouldn't be there. And at least that's my sense when I live next door to a park with a basketball court, when the, when the big kids or the grownups are there, I'm out. So when I was a kid. <laughs> so I, we wanted to really create a place where children under 12, 12 and under would feel safe playing. And that's why we brought in the bucket ball. Um, I, and I, I, I think what Naima said is, is very astute. There's, you know, can't be all things to all people. And I think if you're gonna have children, you also wanna have caregiver seating. So there has to be some determination as to what kind of age group is going to feel welcome here. Because if you're gonna have children, especially children, you know, eight and under, you're gonna to wanna to have caregiver seating. Um, and if you're gonna have senior seating, you know, you're not gonna to wanna to have a lot of active play. So, you know, there was a desire to have seating for people. There's a desire to have um, activities for children. We have hopscotch in the seating area, which is much younger age group. Um, it, 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 and it requires a little bit of space and, and it requires caregivers uh, to, to have a place to seat, sit. So we really need to focus on what is the age group that is going to be accommodated here? Because if you're gonna, you know, let's say the seating area is gonna be, um, you know, the seating is gonna be cut up, but you're gonna put some fitness equipment in. The fitness, again, that's for 13 and over only. So if this, if this is a park for 13 and over, we have to know that that's the desired age group. I don't think that that's, that's not what we heard at the input session though. So we need a little clarification and a little tightening of the, of the desire um, of the age range that's that this is intended for. That's that's what I'm just saying. And I think people, um, I think Valerie was it who said that when she brings it her her child, um, he, the child if there are older kids they won't feel welcome in the basketball court, and that she would also need a place to sit and, and watch that child. So uh, that, Liz, yeah. could I say something real quick? No, 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 Domingo. I I did promise. Um, Going back to the barbershop. I promise and then that I would people. go back to the barbershop. So I'm going to go back to the barbershop, take some of that feedback. I'm trying to balance lots of different people's thoughts. So I'm going back to the barbershop and then I will uh, recognize you, Domingo. 
Uh, Kiana, we're uh, All right. Okay. Hi, my name is Henry Cordero. Can you yep. hear me? Yep. We just we just need everybody in the barbershop to not be talking while Henry's talking so we can hear what Henry has to say. Hi, my name is Henry Cordero. I was born and raised on this block. Uh, basically, we want an expansion of the court. We don't want no bathroom, and we want less benches. So the like, if something. anything, no bench at all. Because right now, we're dealing, we dealing with a lot of things out here. And we never had a problem ever in this basketball court wave. So basically, right now, okay. we have a big problem. We have a lot of drug addicts out here. So I know the benches, that's going to bring a problem. So we want, like, if you can eliminate the benches, even better. We don't want no back. We don't want... We don't want no bath. We don't want no bathroom. I hear you on the bathroom. Bathroom's not on the table, so we don't actually need to talk about a bathroom. We don't need to talk about a bathroom that we're not having. But I hear you. So basically, basically, we want an expansion of the basketball court. Okay. Not, not the way it is now. Um, we don't want we don't want no benches at all. Okay. If, if anything, with two benches up in the front is cool. But we don't want our benches because we we dealing with a okay. lot. With I hear you. And then point, the point very well made. The court the no, court that you guys have designed right now is, is way too small. I'll tell her. Okay. Um, okay. Thank hello? you. The, the fence the fence that you have basically outside. So. The size of the basketball court, I wanted to give you a court that was very close to a regulation size because I thought that would be really great to have as close to regulation size as possible. And so that's why the length of this court is because this spite, the space is really long so we can get in a junior court, but I did have to cut off a little on the sides. But if, we len if you lengthen the court, it gets into a really odd size for it's basketball four, court. But it's four and nine. That's four and side. It's four side of me. So we want to we want to we want to expand on the basketball court. If you okay. can keep it the way it is not even better. Exactly. Four basketball no, 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 no. So the way it is now is it's perfect. Just you know okay. if you want to add a better two we don't okay. Because the, the design you guys have is nice and everything, but it has way too much seats. Okay. Yeah. And it's, right. And that's I, you, you've, you've made your point extremely, extremely well. I hear you. You would like no seats. You would like the basketball court to look exactly the way it looks now, except to, to have like a nice uh, surface. So you would like to see yeah, yeah, both yeah. repairs yeah. made yeah. and for it to look exactly the same as it is now, but with a good surface and with uh, a functioning water fountain and I hear we would we, we would like we will also like the, the light. Yeah. Let's right. see nice okay. All right. I I need I, I need to, I need to bring it back a little bit and I just wanna I just want to establish a couple of things. First, reasonable people can and do disagree. And as other people have said better than I will say, it's a small space and we're not gonna be able to be everything for everybody. Um, there will be no bathroom. That's not up for consideration. Bathrooms are great, but we don't have the funding for a bathroom. So in the interest of time, I would very much like to not talk about the bathroom that we will not be having at this space. Um, I great. hear, yeah. great. I also hear that lighting is very, very important and that you would like lighting in this space. Again, as the Parks Department has made very clear, lighting is expensive and is outside of the scope of this project. And while it may, in theory, be possible, if the funding should come through at some future point, there will not be lighting as part of this project. So again, we can put in the, in the resolution that we would like to see lighting in the future should funding be made available. But beyond that, 
there really isn't much that we can say about lighting because it's not it's out it's it's way more money than is budgeted for this project so what i would really like to to get some kind of understanding from folks is we've had a bunch of community meetings and one of the things that came out of the original meeting that we had back in june of uh, 2021 is that clearly the surfacing needs to be repaired, the water fountain needs to be repaired, and the murals need to be preserved. And that's a community conversation outside of the scope of this resolution. But I'm hoping that Kiana can give us some information on uh, conversations that may have been happening with the mural artists and around uh, preservation of those murals. But other things that other people did say was a desire to see some other possible uses for the space, which is why the Parks Department came up with these design elements. If it turns out that those desires were misspoken or that they were a real small minority and that everybody really just wants basketball, then I imagine the Parks Department can change this design to incorporate um, more basketball and less of these other things. But there was a pretty strong statement about wanting to see some other activities, which is why things like the bucket, you know, the bucket hoops and the the bug hopscotch and some of those things were installed. And that does mean that, you know, speaking as a 60 year old woman who has a grandchild, I personally wouldn't hate a place to sit down if I'm bringing my kids. So I understand why there's a desire for some seating. And I'd love to be able to come to some kind of consensus so that people are happy with what the design looks like and reflects a variety of demands. So uh, with that, I want to recognize uh, Kiana, I think had somebody else in the room who wanted to speak. Okay. Hi, my name is Tiffany. I'm also a resident in this community. I would just like to say that this is supposed to be a place for the young part of the community, especially the young men, to be safe and to find a place like a restaurant and a sanctuary. So I just think having the seating chair when you don't really know who be watching these kids or who becoming that we want that we don't want to touch upon the very unwanted attention. I think the seating should very much be minimized. And as well, I think that this should be focused on the development of our community and not the entire community as a whole. We have many parts for that, but we do have a lot of young kids, unfortunately, who have fallen into the streets because they have no place to play. And I think this should be a place where, you know, we welcome them and we keep them off of the streets. Okay. Thank you. Um, Kiana, do you have other folks in the room or should I call on uh, on Domingo? Okay, she just muted, so Domingo. Uh, so yeah, uh, so I just wanted, uh, as somebody who probably is the most active around doing programming in that particular area, right? Uh, so Mr. Hinkle, uh, the, the group that predominantly uses that park is youth ages 12 and older. So there's no real uh, ecosystem for the three-year-olds to, even though it seems great, uh, most of them go to Raul Wallenberg Playground because there's swings and it's a much bigger park. So that that that's the part that usually caters to a lot of the younger uh, uh, folks from the community to be able to go to the parks. It has, well, that's a, so, uh, and, and to Liz's point, a lot of people have great ideas, uh, but when the rendering comes, they see how it limits a lot of what they wanted to initially see because they might have assumed that it was going to stay the same. So it happened to me when I first got to the board. I always wanted to see this, that, and the third. And then you see in the rendering, it actually limits from what you were initially there for. So that's why when uh, the, the sense I got from June was uh, there was a lot of young people there 
uh, it's a school night. So that's probably why a lot of folks are not seeing them there today. Um, is they want a safe space for the young men in our community to engage in, right? Uh, so therefore, it, a lot of them wanted to see extra things, but it wasn't under the assumption that the rendering or the space was big enough to be able to encapsulate all of that. And I think that's where, um, and, and I'm speaking, Liz, as somebody who was in your committee, and every time I wanted to see something at a park, I would throw a million things out. But unfortunately, there's only so much limits uh, to uh, a space until it loses its essence. Okay. Well said, Domingo. Well Thank said. Um, okay. Nobles, you've got your hand up. Did you? Have something I'll you be want? very brief because I'm probably the last person. Um, thank you. Uh, look, I, I also just want to, you know, amazing, amazing feedback tonight. Things I hadn't heard from other you know, parts when we've talked about this. So thank you so much to the community. And I also really want to thank Ricardo and Laura. Um, I, I, I think that, you know, in the pursuit and like, I love your radius um, diagram because we do that a lot when we talk about the parks and like what other parks are in the area for people to walk to. And, and that really kind of put it in perspective where I can definitely understand the sentiment of this design. It was doing a lot of heavy lifting, trying to be a lot for a lot of people. Um, and, and that's a very admirable thing for a designer. It's not easy. I totally get that. And so I really appreciate your effort here. And then again, I want to go back to the community, um, especially something that Domingo said, doing a lot of work on the streets in this area. Um, and I think that we, I think that we did hear the most up-to-date uh needs um and uh and you know i think this is like this this mean is exactly the way it needed to be and and cheers and cheers to you liz for for running it very nice thank you um i have a couple of people who are typing things in the chat that i think it would just be much more helpful because again the chat to be clear the chat function is not a true chat function nobody can see it the only people who can see the chat function, is, uh, the, the Q&A, are the panelists. This is a public meeting. So I'm going to call on two people who are writing things in the chat. I would like them to speak so that they can have their comments on the record. Uh, Jesenia Rodriguez, uh, who says in the q and I'm in support of this space being utilized for a variety of people, different ages with activities to comment uh, to accommodate those ages. Jesenia, can you please uh, speak to that point? Hi, my name is Jesenia Rodriguez. I'm also a member of this community. I live on 186 in Audubon. Um, and I've, I've, I was a little young, a lot younger when, um, when the park first um, became into existence. And I've seen that a lot of the kids go there and it's for a safe space. But I would also like to see different ages. I, I like the um, design that I just saw. Mm, I like the fact that they are seatings and that if I was taking my child over there that I can see, even if it was an organized basketball game, I would love to see my child playing basketball. So I don't see a problem with the seating. Maybe we can reduce it, but definitely I don't see a problem with that. And, they also, if I take my grandmother or somebody older in the community, that we can sit there together and enjoy the the space. So I'm in support of of it, of the design. Okay, thank you. And uh, Rosa Yolanda Pineda from Conectémonos. Thank you, Liz. I I've been in this block since the '70s. The reality is that this is a community center of multi-use. I have have family gatherings there, party celebrations. I have have green markets. I have closed my SYEP there. So yes, it has a basketball court, and we want to continue to promote the the sports among the people, particularly twelve and around that age, but I would like for that to continue the multi-use community center that it has been for decades. Thank you. Liz and everybody else, thank you. This has been wonderful. Happy holiday season. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, and to you as well. Also, I wanna... Oh, I'm sorry, yes. 
Sorry, somebody was just starting. To speak. It was it was Yesenia. She's on mute now, but she was trying to speak. Oh wait, there you go, Yesenia. I want to say thank you to whoever idea it was to put flyers in the buildings. Um, I've been part of this community, and most of the community boards that I go to is Community Nine, which is in Harlem. So it's nice to be able to actually participate in what I do at work, do it with my own community. So whoever put the flyer in front of my building on 404, I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Good job, Kiana. Yeah. Okay, Kiana, you look like you've got somebody else in the room who wants to speak. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, so the next step, uh, I also did want to just say, uh, reflect somebody, um, uh, Annabelle is correcting me on the lighting that there is, that there is lighting there. Um, so Ricardo... Laura, Leslie, can you speak to the lighting that's there? Um, yeah, it's it's been completely vandalized. Our engineers came and looked at it. It would have to be completely redone to current standards, and we would need a significant amount of money because the whole thing, the whole lighting system, would have to be redone to current standards. And for sports lighting, we do have money. We did. Uh, I did incorporate some uh, security lights. In this, in the area in front of, um, near the street, there's two, two security lights, but those are not sports lights. Okay. And Thank Liz, you. let let me add to that that we would be concerned um, also with the neighbors in the building. You know, the lighting being on later later at night, um, and the the noise that might occur for the neighbors. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, you know, Kiana asked what's next. Um, we got to figure out what is it that the community wants, understanding that there isn't, there doesn't have to be 100% agreement about everything because that's just not how groups of people work and make decisions. There does have to be consensus and there does have to be a real feeling that everybody's views were heard, but it's not like everybody has to be in 100% agreement. I mean, I don't agree with myself all of the time. So this is a big enough group that we're not all going to agree 100% on what's the ideal. And everybody's probably gonna have to give up a little bit of something so that they get some of what they want and other people who want different things also get some of what they want. To be clear, what I think does not matter. This is what is the most important is for the people who live on that block and are the primary users of that space to be happy with what that space looks like. As somebody who's been listening to this conversation this evening, the conversation last month and the conversation in June, I'm hearing different things. It's, it's clear that, you know, we definitely want a, a good surface for basketball. And I think that this design accomplishes that. We definitely want a water fountain. This design accomplishes that. We appear to want seven foot fencing, not four foot fencing. And that will be a recommendation in the resolution. It sounds like everybody wants less seating some people want a lot less seating and a few people want zero seating. 
So as I'm listening to people talking about seating, although there were some very clear statements by people who want no seating at all, I heard a lot more of people saying, yes, we would like some seating. Second that. Um, you know, I'm thinking something that Luana said much, much earlier in the meeting. So it sounds like, and I'm sorry to delay this, but it sounds like we need another go around on the design and that we are actually not going to have a resolution tonight saying thumbs up or thumbs down on the design, because I think we need another go around that redoes that seating area and, you know, preserves some seating, preserves the design element of the, the bucket hoop appropriate for smaller children, some of the younger kid things and perhaps it is possible to put a third hoop up against one of those walls i don't know but you know my degrees are not in design <laughs> my job is to listen to what people are saying and to ask the people who are smart at designing to try and uh, focus in on some of these needs. So eventually we're gonna have to come to some kind of consensus and we're gonna have to understand that as Naima so eloquently put it, this isn't gonna be everything to everybody. But I'm hearing what Jesenia said and what Froze Yolanda said and what um, some other people have said um, I've, that I've got back in my notes further, that there is value in having some of these other aspects of the space. Um, put it to a vote. No, no, no. This isn't the place to vote. No, no, no. That. Domingo, we're not putting it to a vote. And the reason we're not putting it to a vote is it was very clear that this design isn't really capturing what the community wants. So... Right. I would like for the parks department to go back again and, you know, and I'm sorry to like make the designers do more work and I'm sorry to drag all you good people out to what's going to be a third meeting. But I think that, you know, everybody in the barbershop has made an extremely good point that while this design is beautiful, it doesn't really accomplish what it is you all want in that space. So rather than voting, rather than voting on something that we know doesn't accomplish what we would, what the community would like to see, I'd like the parks department to come back to us with another design. And so you, should, you shouldn't be sorry if you're, if you're making it right. You know, I think that's awesome what you're doing. Hell yeah. I, you know, I appreciate everybody, everybody's feedback. I appreciate everybody's willingness to come to meetings. I appreciate that the parks designers aren't saying, hey, look, you know, this is the design we made. If you don't like it, too bad. We're going to do it anyway. Um, you know, this is what community looks like. This is what community, community dialogue looks like. This is what democracy looks like. And I am here for that. So, um, you know, if I'm, if I'm understanding everybody correctly, we want more basketball, less seating, but not no seating, um, and a seven foot fence. With the picket. With the picket, <laughs> and as decorative as you can make it within budget. Um, am I missing any like major pieces? Everybody in the barber shop, thumbs up, thumbs down. Did I kind of summarize that? Okay. So, <laughs> so the, the only the only missing piece in here is um, um, Kiana. Can you are you able to elaborate at all on conversations that you've been able to have with the uh, mural artists? And is there any kind of an update 
on what a plan. Uh, Lynn, I'm sorry, Lynn, because the tablet is going to die, so it might just turn off on the, in the meeting. And, uh, okay. So I will follow back up with you in regards to the murals. Um, they're going to have conversations with the artist, but I also but I also really wanted to give a big shout out to 186 today for coming out tonight and coming through and being present and advocating for the Black. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, indeed. So a question for you, um, Laura, Ricardo, Leslie. Um, when can we look forward to a new design? Would this be January? Would this be February? Uh, I, I would hope by January, but we, yeah. we have to go through our internal process, so it might it might require an extra month. But okay. I think the changes. I mean, it, to, to me, it seems pretty clear what we have to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, we thank everybody for their input. It's yeah. really helpful to have as much input, and we are so we're glad we're pleased and privileged to to do this to make you happy with your vegetables. So whatever it takes, okay. But um, I'll say safely February. Okay, so then um, if so, then let's assume February and um, Kiana, if you can ask the good people at the barbershop, if they don't mind doing this one more time, that would be fantastic. And again, like hate to drag everybody out to an extra meeting, but I kind of love this. <laughs> you know, I kind of love this. So y'all are we the best. We do too. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much. But we really do appreciate your feedback and thank you for speaking so clearly. And Liz, Liz you so should we, probably host gonna... the meeting there next month uh, in February. That might be a good look. Yeah. Liz, we're going to we're going to <laughs> We're going to try really hard to get it to you in January. So if you if you could be flexible. Yeah. Sorry. We will try to get back to you. is my middle name. Okay, great. We'll have the design fairly quickly. It's just a matter of getting through our internal reviews. So yeah, the process. Yeah. I just wanted to leave one more intervention as food for thought. And it's just to keep in mind the the times that we're living in right now. And just the fact that, you know, we hear very often that our young people are suffering right now, right? There are a lot of issues. And so, again, centering spaces that focus on older youth, it's okay, you know, it's okay. Um, let's not be afraid to, to give them that space because as someone pointed out, there's actually another park nearby that has swings and is more adequate for younger kids and, you know, parents that they wanna go with their families. And let's be realistic, right? If, if this is a park that really does center basketball, for example, are our elderly neighbors going to want to be in that space when there's, games happening and there's going to be a lot of noise, right? And there's gonna be a lot of back and forth. So let's just keep that in mind. And, and again, be afraid to allow that space to be centered for the older youth. Like it's okay to give them that. That's all I wanted to. Totally agreed. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right, it is um, 8.30. And I, we do have uh, a whole other agenda item which uh, requires a rezo. So I would like to, um, Parks folks, you can go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, you don't have to go, you're welcome to stay, but, um, and we've got. Thank you everyone and good night. Thank you. Uh, we've got, Emily Maxwell, are you who's presenting for Trees New York? Yes. I am. Hi, everybody. It's so great to be with you all. Um, my name is Emily Maxwell. And um, Ms. Ritter, shall I dive right in? Yeah. Um, okay. you know, we're we're going to be talking about trees. So <laughs> uh, I, yeah, why don't you just take it away? So I, I am here with you all tonight. My name is Emily Maxwell. I'm with the Nature Conservancy, and we're a leading member of the Forest for All NYC Coalition. And I just want to name that typically I give this talk alongside my colleague, Keisha Smith from the Manhattan Borough President's Office. Keisha has the flu, so she cannot be with us tonight. So I'm going to try to represent us both. Um, is it okay if I share my screen? 
Yes, you are a okay. panelist. You have the ability to do that. Fantastic. So wonderful to be with you all. Um, we're here tonight to talk about Forest for All NYC, the New York City Urban Forest Agenda, and Million More Trees. I'll give you some quick background. So the Nature Conservancy, we're a global organization. Our mission is to conserve the lands and waters on which all life depends. And in New York City, and you all know well, uh, a lot of our communities are suffering the effects of climate change, particularly extreme heat and flooding. So to that end, we have an initiative called Future Forest NYC. We produce good science. I'm going to share a little bit of that with you. It's been a great and energizing meeting tonight, but I also want to get folks you know, home at a reasonable time. Um, and we also lead the Forest for All NYC Coalition, which has an urban forest agenda. And we're here tonight because the Manhattan Borough President has worked with us to draft a community, a sort of fodder for a community board resolution that we're asking you all to consider passing or augmenting for your own community. Um, so urban heat island, I just want to give you all an example. On the left hand side, you'll see where there's more green, that means there's more vegetation, trees and leaves. On the right hand side, where we see um, more purple, we have cooler temperatures, more red to yellow, hotter. And we see that where we have more vegetation on a hot summer day, we have cooler temperatures. And that's a big deal with the extreme heat that we're facing. So New York City has about 7 million trees across the whole city, public and private land. Um, and the urban forest isn't just the trees, but it's the people who care for them. The urban forest cleans our air, helps with climate change pollution, cools our streets, reduces stress, makes us feel better, can help neighbors connect when we're outside checking them out. Areas with more trees tend to attract more folks for going outside, and I can tell that's a huge issue to, to your community board. Um, helps with inland flooding and, of course, can attract fun critters like birds. So what we know is that um, across the city, though, the trees aren't distributed equitably. So this is a real issue of equity and justice. If we look at this map, we can see that Manhattan um, had just about 22% tree canopy, whereas um, other boroughs had a bit more and some have a bit less. But that if we look across Manhattan, um, we can see, and we'll take a deeper dive here, the different community boards um, and community districts have different amounts of trees. We also know that canopy is changing. So across the city as a whole, we have gained about 2% tree canopy over the past 10 years or so. But some neighborhoods like where we see the reds and yellows are facing loss that's largely storm related. So coming in to your district, I will say you all enjoy a higher level of tree canopy, which is wonderful. You have terrific parks, high bridge, where I actually used to work many years ago, um, in wood. And so you have some great canopy, but you also, and, you, and you've had great canopy growth, but you also have more of an opportunity um, to add canopy. So we know that there is an opportunity in every neighborhood across New York City to increase canopy. Um, and when we talk about increasing canopy, we, we mean both protecting and caring for what we have and also planting more trees across all jurisdictions. The biggest question that folks ask, and one of the things we concern ourselves with is we can't just be planting, we also need to have adequate funding for the maintenance and care for our trees. And there is a history of insufficient funding of this. Um, our trees, face challenges of climate change, pests and pathogens, kind of insufficient management, um, and lack protection. And until recently, there wasn't really a vision. So Forest for All NYC, and I'm sorry I'm talking fast. You can all ask me any questions you want after this. Forest for All NYC is a coalition of more than 70 organizations across New York City working to advance a healthy urban forest that's equitably delivering its benefits to all New Yorkers. Um, this is the list of our coalition members. I can, of wow. course, Ms. Ritter follow up with you with our website. This is all listed. It's all public information. As you see, we have very diverse members ranging from WE Act and New York City Environmental Justice Alliance to the Real Estate Board of New York. So what I know is that everybody from advocates to developers, we love trees. Um, and when we think about trees, we're really thinking about our neighborhoods, health and well-being, climate change adaptation, environmental justice, human connections to beautiful areas. Um, 
and of course, the sort of care and, and health of our urban forest. So the urban forest agenda was crafted by 50 of the organizations on that list. Our top line goal is we want to expand existing tree canopy from about 22% where it is today to about 30% by 2035 so that we can have cooler, healthier, more beautiful, more resilient neighborhoods. Um, the agenda, though, does have a lot of actions. I realize this is a lot of information to take in, but we believe in community scale planning as well as a citywide goal. Um, we believe in employment for local folks to care for trees, job development programs. We do see opportunities to improve regulations. We also see an opportunity to increase economic development by reclaiming wood waste when uh, trees do come down sometimes. Um, so how can you all get involved? And I hope I haven't just you know, overwhelmed you with information. We are here asking for you to consider passing a community board resolution in support of the urban forest agenda and million more trees. So all five borough presidents, I will note, as well as the city council parks committee chair, Shaker Krishnan, have publicly stated that they're committed um, to uh, the 30 by 35 goal and also the 30% canopy by 2035 and also to a million more trees. And we are sort of together asking you to consider the resolution in support of the urban forest agenda and million more trees. We are able to provide presentations like this. We could do it a little slower if that's helpful um, or faster to educate your community board more broadly. We have a lot of educational materials on our website, Forest for All NYC. We have great social media for those of you that like to kind of follow along with what's happening in the field. Um, and we're really here to answer questions. The other thing I'll offer is that many of you might be asso associated with various civic associations, local organizations. Everybody is welcome to join Forest for All NYC. Joining just means that you support the urban forest agenda. We provide some fun content. And um, this is me. This is my email. And I'm happy to entertain any questions. And uh, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. That was that was a lot. <laughs> But also wasn't really that hard to follow because, you know, yes. trees. So uh, somebody had sent me and somewhere buried in my email, I have the template. Uh, do you have the template handy? And can you share screen on that? Because Let I'm gonna, me. you know, I know it's late, but this doesn't feel terribly controversial to me. Um, so if we still have quorum, uh, we got me, we got Nobles, Barbara, Daniel, Luana, Mancita, Naima. Yeah, we still have quorum. So if we do, and if we can just take a look at this rezo, um, I feel, and if I could get all the committee members to have their screens on so I can just like see them if they can. Um, I, I think we may be able to just like pass this. Where is Danny that it's sunlight right now? That's He's what I want to know. Danny, my boy. Thanks for He's coming in. I'm, I'm, I'm in Hawaii right now. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Yo, you good, man. You good. Thanks for joining. Be Thanks for jelly. being here. <laughs> at at yeah. least I'm in the meeting. At least I'm in the meeting. You Yo, know? for real, yes. for real. <laughs> I've been okay. listening to the meeting as, as much as I can, but I, 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 I hear I hear some good stuff, you know. Okay. I I apologize for that um, loud noise outside my window. Okay, so whereas the urban for forest refers to. You know what? I'm going to let people read this and mute myself. Yeah, I and I want to just note this because Keisha and I, I work for an NGO and Keisha works for the borough president. She probably sent you a version that is not filled with comments. Like she probably put it into the format that works for you all, but this is the gist, even if it is not perfect. So I just want to acknowledge that. And I'm going to dig through my email more to see if I can find Keisha's version. That's, that's fine. I mean, I can, I know that I have it, but it's a little bit too much multitasking and I haven't eaten. So it's all good. I, and we get the picture. We but, get it. You know, yeah, it, we're not going to bait and switch you, but right. like there might be some language modification. Yeah, 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 yeah. You all no, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, stop apologizing. Um, so, yeah, this is fine. I'm looking at, you know, ignoring the comments over on the side. These whereas is kind of establish the importance of it. Um, 
I think it would be helpful to know, wait, scroll back up. Um, I would put in a whereas that speaks to the, um, the, the unique nature, pun intended, of community district 12, which is like 40%, 38% parkland and which has, um, you know, a, a I'm guessing the best tree canopy in Manhattan. We have um, the most parkland per capita, I think, in the city. Yeah. So I guess part of the reason why I very much would like to pass this is I feel like as a board that has, as a district that has as many trees as we have, we should be out in front, you know, preaching the good word of trees, right? So I would love to be able to pass this. Um, it would be helpful if I could get from you the specifics of what is our, you know, what is the percentage um, of our tree canopy? And I would probably, expand that whereas to talk a little bit about um, the percentage of the number of acres of parkland overall. Um, if you could scroll down a little more. And then the resolved. Yeah, I'm reading all of this and it looks good to me. Is everybody else following along? Looks great to me. Driving. No, I, I think that that note that you just had in terms of basically saying what the bench is and where we need to go is exactly that yeah. would give us a little bit more oomph. But outside of that, this is okay. solid. Who would say no to planting more trees? Yeah, so Danny, <laughs> I, I don't really want to make you read while you're driving, but yeah, in, I'm like in, listening essence, to what you're saying. in essence, the resolved uh, says that we endorse the goal of planting a million more trees by 2030, that we endorse the um, NYC urban forest agenda that we heard a little bit about earlier. Yeah. Uh, that we adopt a goal of whatever is the target canopy, which is the, the uh, difference between where we're at and 30%. Um, and that uh, Manhattan Community Board 12 calls on the city to, you know, plant more trees, implement the agenda, set a citywide goal of more trees, uh, develop and establish tree planting and management standards for various property types and a bunch of things that are really consistent with those goals and invest in citywide stewardship, um, education and events. I mean, one of the things that we have had as a um, priority item is you know, more um, forestry and horticultural, tree horticultural, uh, arboreal resources to support the tree canopy that we already have. So this is actually pretty consistent with things that we've done before. This doesn't feel, this doesn't feel at all controversial or like a reach. Agreed. Agreed. More trees, more life, more air too. Okay. Yep. Sally would be happy with this. She would say yes. yes. <laughs> yes, she would. Yes, she would. Um, so, okay. Um, so, is everybody in favor? Yay. And Barbara, can you? Hi. Barbara, we need you unmuted and or on camera so that we can hear you say yes or give a thumb. Yeah, I'm in favor. Okay. So, we got Mancita, Nobles, Luana, Danny, Barbara. Me and Naima, how are you voting on this? Oh. Hi, this is Naima. I, I vote yes. Fantastic. It is unanimous. Nice. <laughs> All righty. I want to thank you. And shall I email you, Ms. Ritter, with yes. some of that those data points for you so you yes. can then tailor it to your own needs? That would be great. And if you could do me a favor and just send me this in case I can't find the other one, I'll take out the comments and I'll... Yep put it into our um, our format and- uh, What's up, Danny? There's a little cross committee talk real quick. What's up? Yeah, I just wanted to show you this. Right. Congratulations, my I'm friend. Danny. Oh awesome. man, you'll run for all of us, man. I, I need that third hand exercise over here. That is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, Good for you. Little inspiration, bro. You can do Good it. Good for you. you. Can do it. Uh, we'll that see about fantastic. that. Fantastic. 
So I did want to say, uh, you know, I was hoping to get done by 830. You know, I'll, Great take meeting. Nine, I'll take nine in a pinch. Before we adjourn, I just have two things uh, very quickly. One is that um, Adama, who was having a lot of difficulty in getting on, and I was hoping was going to stay to the end of the meeting, um, did not. But I just want to read you what they wrote in the Q and A. Um, I'm scrolling, looking for it. Uh, they're a student at the CUNY School of Public Health. Uh, they wanted to talk about the New York State Bill A6881C, which is a bill that was introduced to address food insecurity among students at public and private higher education institutions. The majority of campus students face significant issues that tend to affect their education, especially low-income students. One of the big concerns that affects this group is hunger and the inability to afford a balanced diet that can sustain their education. In 2019, 48% of CUNY students and 40% of SUNY students reported struggling with food insecurity. Many students prioritize other financial responsibilities such as paying rent, textbooks and transportation. Uh, they're advocating to support this bill because food is a human right. The bill would send $10 million in state uh, funding to colleges and universities across the state to help them tackle food insecurity. Higher education institutions can use the funding to create SNAP enrollment opportunities, establish meal swipe sharing programs, fund campus pantries, raise awareness about existing on-campus resources, and much, much more. Now, tremendously important issue, 100% not our committee. That education. said, uh, they tried to go to youth and education last night, but we're having difficulty with um, uh, with their audio and with connecting. Um, I don't want to take up a lot of time on this because it's totally outside of the purview of our committee, but I wanted to honor that this is an important topic, that this person was trying to engage with the community on this, and hopefully, hopefully, uh, they will come to the general meeting, um, speak about it during the public session. Hopefully there will be a little bit more of an opportunity to run it through the appropriate committee, whether it's youth and education or health and human services. But all of that said, I just wanted to flag it for you because it's an important issue. And if it does come up at a general meeting, um, if you do have the opportunity to speak with your local a uh, state senator or assembly person about this bill or its Senate companion bill uh, to maybe advocate for this. Um, you know, I was this close to applying for food stamps when I was a, a CUNY graduate student. So, and that's, and tuition is much, much more expensive and rent is much, much more expensive than it was in the early eighties. So I'm saddened, but not at all surprised to see these statistics and I'm grateful that somebody's working on that. So, um, yeah. Are you, are, were you motioning to me? Sorry, no, I still got kids running around right now. <laughs> got it. All right, well, um, Oh, goodness. There was something that I meant to say also by way of an update. I don't remember what yeah, it was. Yeah, there was two things. Right. And I know I'm going to forget as soon as I log out. <laughs> this is my least favorite part of hitting 60. Just like things are in my brain and then they're gone. Yeah. They're gone. Um. Oh. Also totally off topic, but I spent eight days in Georgia. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Motion to adjourn. It was awesome. <laughs> Second. Uh, okay. Luana. Thank you, thank, you, thank you so much. Um, but, but I know we're adjourned, but Nobles, before we go, there is a very small possibility that I will not be able to, uh, I'm going to be on grandbaby duty. Oh, cool. On, um, on the night of the general meeting. 
So when is the general meeting with all the holidays again? It's going to be on the 20th. So it'll be, it'll be a week early, the third Tuesday. So. Oh, so that's taking the place of executive committee then. Yeah. Cause executive committee is going to be on Thursday, the 15th. Um, Got it. No problem. I can represent off. I can represent us. I'll probably be in for part yeah. of it, but I don't know if I'll be in for the whole thing. So I no might worries. I'll be around. Present. Uh, just give a quick summary of what we did with the. We'll do. The basketball and to present the tree reza, which I don't imagine will be very controversial. Not a problem. All righty. Thank you, right. everybody. Thank uh, you. And Paola, are you still here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, always. Thank Fantastic. you, Paula. You are the best. We're getting in before nine o'clock. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And if you can, as I know you always do, just make sure to send me the um, all the information so that I can put together the minutes and the rezo and whatnot. And thank you, everybody. Good meeting, okay. Liz. Thanks so much, everyone. All righty. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.